And we're oh, live, Jimmy. Oh, it's Thursday. And that, that means it's live hangout day, Matt Gunn. Yeah, it is, man. This is the life we live. I Thursday always is the new Friday. Thursday is always a good day, man. I like it. Me too. I love these little get-togethers we have with you, Jason, and the rest of the RC world out there. There's so much to talk about. Hey, we have one new viewer. He just oh, it's, they're starting viewer. to pile in. Hey, everybody. Welcome oh, to the show. Here they come. Hey, oh, my everyone. God. We just jumped from like 5 Whoa. to 50. Wow. 1,000 viewers live right now. That's crazy. That was an amazing <laughs> leap. Hey, everyone's waiting to 1,000. Oh, uh, and we lost one. He was like, who is that dude? All right, so we're talking with Maticus Gunnicus, who's in the hidden layer, the underground sanctum of RC. So if everything goes south in America, if uh, th you know, I'm not, whatever might happen, the underground layer of Matt Gunn is where everyone on RC Group should head if you're in the middle of the country. We got I got stuff in here to survive everything but a meteor strike and a nuclear direct hit. I mean, we've got food, we've got clean water, we've got other things that we don't talk about, and we've got uh, RC. So, you know, I've got solar panels too, so wow. we can charge RC when it becomes martial law. They shut down all the social services. There's no electricity. We can still charge batteries and go fly. What do you guys say? You want to come up to Ohio? Well, I have my own inner sanctum, and uh, I have been under martial law. We can talk about that later in the podcast. I've literally been under martial law. I'm pretty sure during the riots in L.A. that was martial law. We had troops on the ground in a 6 o'clock curfew. But, uh, Jason, I'm a little concerned about you, man. You're over here in Nashville living above the ground in an office with sheetrock between you and the madness. I'm good, man. So I live near the lake, and we've got an island picked out for if the uh, stuff happens. That's where we're all going to meet on the island. Yeah, we're you and everybody ish. else. <laughs> this is true. We'll, we'll be able to uh, have a little community there, the island islanders. Hey, hey guys, quick question. You got you have one answer, okay? The apocalypse happens, and you know, forget the necessities. Let's just say you have them, but you can take one RC. What's it going to be? Jim Graham, go. I'm going to bring the uh, F-210 from Wakara because it's the only thing I have that will withstand a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Jason? I want to say my DLG, but I'm probably going to say the Tiny Whoop. Oh, uh, yeah. I well, you can <laughs> scout out like things and see where the crops are. and. So, yeah, we officially, I mean, everybody's jumping on the Tiny Whoop bandwagon, but I really believe that was what I would take, too. I would actually. I need something soothing and calming. Uh, the tiny whoop uh, whoop isn't exactly a soothing RC like a like a glider would be, like a DLG. You know, you can launch and just kind of relax mm -hmm. while wolves eat all the people around you because everybody's hungry and stuff like that. Isn't that what happens in the apocalypse? Well, listen, I actually had. Um, I have an active imagination, and I imagined that if you were in some sort of scenario where you needed to see something or find some intel, but you couldn't physically go do it, and I, I uh, imagine, Jason, you flying the tiny whoop out with your goggles on, checking out the situation, and since you only have four minutes of flight time and you don't want to whoop back where you're at so they'll know who's flying the whoop, you'd have to ditch the whoop after you got your... There you go. You yeah, have an army of them. Of them. It's you like know, one of those warheads, the the ones that they shoot and, and you FPV it into something. You've seen those things? I think it's called like a switchblade or or something like that. It's a military little guy. It, it comes out of the tube and then the wings go sideways oh, and it's like yeah. a warhead. Yeah. It's one time use only. Tiny whoop. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, I, before, we, before we go there, I do have a prediction to make. Oh. You guys can mark my words. You're going to win the tiny whoop race. No, the tiny whoop is going to be the next big thing in real estate. I thought you said your chair pack thing was going to be the next big thing <laughs> no, in real estate. in real estate, right? So I feel like I had this awesome tour of Matt's house after watching your Tiny Whoop video. <laughs> I got to see oh, yeah. all the little nooks and crannies, man. It was like a great little tour of your place. Matt I had reservations. talking about how uh, exposed he is now. 
I had <laughs> reservations about posting that video, but um, you know, what it was, is what it is. In the name of ma putting out quality content, think uh, about it. I, though, you know, if you're a real estate agent, do you want to like take little boring pictures, or do you yeah. want to fly a tiny whip around the house and show everybody what it you, looks like? You can't fly like we fly, though. We're just <laughs> banging through rooms and going under and stirring up dust bunnies, and it's like. So, you so know, what I we're feel better about, about them flying a tiny whip inside the house than I do about them flying phantoms outside the house. There you go. Matt Gunn, uh, we did the five things you didn't know about the tiny whip. It was a live stream. I think it was Monday when we put that up. And then Matt ordered all his stuff from mm -hmm. Drone Bees, right? No, from uh, New Newbie Drone. Drone. Newbie Drones. They're out of stock on everything, by the way. And uh, at least at this moment in time. And so he built his unit and did a full build thread on RC Groups. You can find it in the FPV section or the micro FP, uh, micro multirotor. Where is it at? It's, FPV. it's in uh, FPV Talk yeah. is where I stuck it. Here's my tiny whoop, and I can't believe that I wasted time painting it. I even, like I said in my video, I scuffed the frame so it would adhere, and I hit it with uh, Temi, a primer, which is some really good candy coating shell. And then I hit it with Tamiya. Yeah, and then I hit it with uh, Tamiya Olive Drab, and it lasted all of 10 seconds. <laughs> well, it's got a cool camo look now. Doesn't it? It looks kind of legit. It's kind of Star Wars y. Uh, uh, I've been through battle and survived. It's the Jeep of the RC world. So here's my big news. Uh, last night, I was late night chatting with Jim Burke, the owner, operator, founder of RCGroups.com, 1996. Y'all, that wasn't, I mean, possibly one of the older websites, definitely forums still around on the Internet. And uh, it occurred to me that we're all meeting up at Oshkosh. Is this the world's largest airplane gathering? That's what I thought. There may be one bigger in Germany, but I don't know. I think okay, this so is we're all we're all driving to Oshkosh, and Matt's flying next week. And so these two guys have their whoops, and I don't have a whoop. Jim Burke doesn't have a whoop, but he, he lamented about it. So this morning, uh, Jason and I got on Amazon. I'm an Amazon fanatic. I'd wear the shirt or the hat. And uh, we found, first we found the two inductrix with controllers, which was important because I don't, we didn't have a controller for Jim to have, and we're bringing this to him as a gift. Then we found, I, I was like, well, what about batteries? Well, we found the batteries. Then Jason found the motors, and then we, we got charge. We got two chargers. Camera transmitter. Then the cameras, and the, all the prices were uh, right there with everyone else. The only thing we didn't get was the uh, camera mount, and Maticus there is going to print us some out. That's right, man. I've got here. There's the mount. Woo! There it is. So uh, 3D print and mount, easy to do. And I'll also print you a circular polarized antenna. Holder. I love to drop this thing. I drop it all. The fr I dropped it twice in my video. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> and then I sounded like a girl. I was like, whoops. <laughs> a tiny whoop. Whoops. A tiny whoops. <laughs> hey, but I, I actually outfitted mine with an HD camera that actually does work. See, you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the flight times are like uh, one or two seconds, <laughs> and it doesn't lift off the ground. So uh, it's really an awesome rig now. It goes, whoop. <laughs> and that's it. You like nice. that? Does that sound all right? Oh, J Jim is. Uh, there's a lull. There's eight. There's eight children in the basement uh, going to my pool. And Did you scream at them? I just yelled a recording live really loudly. <laughs> oh, I thought you would have said "shut up." No, I've uh, turned a new leaf. Okay, no more abusive talk out of Jim. No, I'm i uh, I'm a new guy. <laughs> It's true. It's oh true. man, so now I hear the garbage truck. They used to come in the mornings, like 8.30 in the morning. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and they're just now getting here to take my trash. You know what? Let's talk about complaining about people that drive big trucks. <laughs> UPS can kiss my butt. How about that? Uh-oh, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Brown Santa is not going to come and visit you anymore, and that's the UPS man, so don't I'll think. I'll tell you a story. What can Brown do for you, Jim? UPS is down Apparently the street. Apparently nothing. And every time I go to UPS, they're like, oh, we ship just like uh, uh, the post office. You can do priority mail here. But somehow it's magically $10 more or some crazy number that I always feel like I've been cheated. Yeah, it's not a feeling you were. 
Yeah, and and then I sent the the Terry Awards, one to China and one no Taiwan, I don't know, a foreign country, and one to Canada, and the amount on those were crazy. So anyway, I have a little thing coming today. It was supposed to be two day air, supposed to be here yesterday. No, it's not. They're like, oh, they put a little eye up that said, oh yeah, it won't be there on time. No, oh, man, well, oh, man. that's why I do, Fe- I do FedEx. Fe- I have a FedEx account. I print out my stuff here, take it in, drop it off. They know me by name. They call me, hey, Maticus Gunicus, what's up? And I drop off my uh, my stuff at FedEx, and it's like half as much as UPS. How does that even happen? Give me you as postal service, except when I order on Amazon and they're going to deliver on Sunday, and then I get a note that says, couldn't deliver, could not find a place to leave the package. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, like in, the box, in the you know box. You know who's the even better than, better than both of them is DHL. I love DHL. They are the underdog. They have to catch up with UPS and FedEx. And, and because of that, their service rocks. I have never had a problem with DHL. From Although China there aren't any DHL. Week. Yeah. I know, right? That's super fast. That's extremely fast. And by the way, I decided that you need to change the Terry Awards for our Chinese uh, friends to the Cherry Fang Awards. Yeah. Does that make any sense to you guys? Do you know what I'm talking about? No I know clue. Lisa Lee, but I don't know Cherry Fang. There's like 90% of the women in the hobby industry uh, that I deal with from China are named Cherry Fang. Well, you know, I've done a little research because okay. I uh, talked to... The uh, Chinese advertisers every day. And by the way, I talk to them late at night. I've been up till I'm not uh, tooting my own horn here, but I've been staying up till one in the morning for the past week working a deal with uh, RM, no RC, <laughs> RC RCM. Yeah, they make cell planes. But th- the minute I wake up in the morning is when they uh, go leave the office, and uh, after everyone in the house goes to sleep, it's when they all show back up. Yeah. And they want it, and they want it now. Well, you know, they're pretty nice about it, but I like to be around when they need something. So, uh, with all that said, they get to pick their name. So, I know a girl named Rainbow. Uh, I know a lot of Lucy's. Uh, this girl's name is Lisa Lee. And uh, I want to welcome them as uh, they are now the forum sponsor of four sailplane uh, forums in the sailplane section. That's pretty good stuff, man. They got some good-looking birds too. They have a lot of the typhoons and uh, and planes like that. So I think I may pick one up. A lot there of the it is. Comp- sell plane talk. RCRCM. Yep. A lot of the companies that uh, sell sell planes sell airplanes from this factory. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping we get to do some reviews. I said you need to do a contest, and she said uh, please explain how that's going to work. So we'll pick us an awesome plane that is very uh, general to all the users out there, and uh, then all three of us will get to decide what kind of creative thing you have to do to enter the contest, and we're going to do that too. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So, so listen on uh, on more uh, heat related summer news. I got a a PM from a friend of mine who lives down the street who is a ham operator, so it is related to FPV, and he wants to string an antenna out the back up into a tree and ask what quad I could use to help him string it. Huh. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm thinking Phantom Four because I'm not going to FPV the string up there. I'm going to visually fly it up to this limb that he's designated. And, but here's the thing. It's an antenna. So I can hook it to the quad. I can fly it through the air. I can probably get it around that limb. The question is, how do I detach when everything is in the right place? Yeah, that's a good question. It's tough, hook? man. Maybe I put it on a hook, and I hook it up, and then when I get it over the limb, I dip down and leave the wire up on the limb. Well, if the quad weighs enough, I we've done something similar to this when there was a quad stuck in a tree. Yeah. I tied a piece of string to one of my racer quads and flew it up over the tree and and then down the other side so we could grab and yank on the tree and shake it to try to shake the quad out. Oh, yeah. And uh, we successfully got over, and then my quad didn't weigh enough to drop all the way <laughs> with the friction of the rope on the tree. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had to like uh, you know 
I don't know. It took us a you while. Couldn't, like, you couldn't slack the rope on the other side? And no, it was completely work. slack. It was just pure friction of that much uh, rope yeah. you know, when, and all the through the tree. It just didn't weigh enough on the quad to drop. Why don't you guys put a servo on the bottom and use another transmitter, a 2.4 gig, just hook up a battery servo and make a little uh, make a little slider with a pin in it, you know, that you can release? It just sounds so complicated. Just thinking about what Jason's saying, what if I took a rope and uh, tied it to the Phantom 4? I also have the... the uh, How high is it? The Bumblebee. It's in a pine tree, so... As high as a pine tree goes. But what I could do is just take the rope Fly up over the limb and then land, and you then can't untie. You can come back down in your own. You're going to come back down in that. Uh, uh, you're right. You've got to cut your. You've just got to shut her down when you get over the top, and you know you're you're there. Just completely go to idle, shut it down, let it fall, and then just let it sling itself back down. Well, you'd have to. So you'd have to not just be over the top. You're going to have to go, and however tall the tree is, you want to fly past the tree that distance. So when you do drop. <sighs> Then I'm, in somebody, then I'm in a neighbor's yard. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll, yeah, I mean, depends on how far. I don't, I just can't see it. But. I totally didn't think of the blade, of it coming back up in the blade. Well, don't you have blade protectors? I do on the Phantom. Well, then you're fine. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's the Phantom. This is my four-wheel drive beater quad. You realize that so. all you all you need to do is a pe- is a fishing line, right? <laughs> I think that we're both trying to make it really yeah. complicated. All I ask I mean, is for video. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we want to see this not work. Listen, <laughs> I got an update. Update. I feel a little embarrassed talking about this. Uh-oh. So you know the guy that ran by my house the other day uh, that was playing Pokemon Go, and I yeah. ran outside yeah. thinking it was uh, the kid. a stalker? Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I've got more information on what's going on here because it's still happening. There are rare Pokemon spawning in your yard. Check it out. My daughter comes back, and I'm like, you tell me what is going on. She came back last week, and she said it was a Snorlax. <laughs> and I said, okay, what does that mean? And she said, it's a Snorlax, and they're rare. And I said, is this why he's running down the side of the house? And she said, yeah, because he was trying to catch it before it vanished. I do said, they run he... from you, or do they just stay put? No, they, uh, they like, rustle in bushes, so you can hear it on your phone. You can hear it rustling, and then as you get closer, Jeez. it rustles louder, right? So the Snorlax is really rare. I looked it up. I also have a picture. I don't think anyone wants to see it. It looks like a fat blue cat with fangs. Okay, okay. yeah, the Snorlax, yeah. So I used to babysit them. I find out, well, here I got uh, more people... That Snorlax keeps popping up, and since it's rare, it's driving more kids into the yard. So what I did is I got Pokemon <laughs> Go. Yeah, it's crazy. So I got Pokemon Go, and what I thought I would do is I would hunt all the Pokemons on my property and get them all so that the kids wouldn't come on my property because then this I would the have all the Pokemon. That's the best story I've ever well, heard. Once you have all the Pokemon, then you can sell those said Pokemon on your device. You sell your whole thing, and for thousands of dollars, people are doing it every day. Are they? Well, check this out. The reason there's so many kids in my yard and so many uh, Pokemon things is because of the creek next to the house. Water Water attracts water Pokemons. Yep. So this I'm is gonna, out of control. Is this for real? It is. I want to dam the creek up up by my neighbor's <laughs> house. You know, I could do it until it rains. Dude, the Corps of Engineers will be go, coming over to your house, and they're like, well, what unless, are you doing? Google Maps data picks up that there's no longer a stream there. It'll still be there for the Pokemon. Yeah, uh, and you'll flood again. Well, the problem. problem is this. So, so now I'm out every day Pokemoning. And, uh, like, when I'm at work, I can't Pokemon. And so my daughter will come down and says, Dad, there's an Electrobuzz in the yard. Do you know where it's at? And I'll be like, yeah, go down the fence and go across the creek. <laughs> and he's in the bushes. So now all of a sudden, you know, Pokemon Go expert, and all I ever wanted to do is keep people out of my dang doe yard. <laughs> mm. This is insane. You really... I didn't see myself doing this at this point in my life. You became what you hated the most, Jim. No. Seriously, it's I... It's a life lesson. 
the I don't know. I mean, you're outside. You're you're in Mother Nature. You're getting sun on your face, and you even though you have your face in your phone, you're still having fun out and about. It's a great game, I think. It's the future, I mean, it's, man. that game has generated the most media headlines of anything I've ever seen. People love to hate it. They make fun of it. And then I just see, but I see so many people of all ages in my neighborhood daily walking around looking for Pokemon. <laughs> so it's see, like you see I the kids that fell off a cliff. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's now that's Darwinism at its finest. All right, there's awesome. a reason why those kids fell off that cliff because they weren't the brightest, you know, children. I would think. Let's you jump off. Sorry. Yeah, yeah Let's you just can't do that. Pokemon. I've got a video, Jason. I know you haven't uh, uploaded it to the RCG uh, server yet, but I have a video of Jason's new quad. I'm going to share my screen here. One uh, second. What is this? It is pretty stinking awesome. Uh, hmm. There it is. All right. I'm going to hit play. Check this out. Oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Let me get. Let me put it on screen here for you guys. Jim, Jim, just broadcast yourself. Yeah. Well, there's no sound. I, well, this guy like a, is, a, is a real American, or not? maybe he's not American. I don't know. He's a real hero in my book. I mean, what? do that with gas engines? You gotta Are those nuts. 200s? Are those DA200s on there? Yeah. yeah, and he's throttling with that stick on the right. It looks like he's throttling with his... Oh, he's mode no, one. No, no, no. Uh, it does control throttle, but it's controlling direction. So the throttle's still on the left, but... Okay, he's mode two. Whoa, that is insane. It is nuts, man. I mean, with gas engines, like the most unreliable He's, things in the history of man. Yeah, and he's not even in a field. He's yeah. in like a clearing in the woods in case if it goes wacky, he's going into a tree. Like and all I, those blades are right there. Flips right over the flip of death, literally. I mean, he's got blades that would sever many parts of his body. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what but you should let me, do? Let me ask you this. Yeah. If this was you, if you were right here, Mm -hmm. I would be 50-50 on landing or just hauling that. Just go. <laughs> I just, just the same thing. I would be 50-50 of just punching it and going, woo, and heading over the tree line at a 45-degree angle. Do you know what? You could take somebody that's like, uh, this is the worst idea ever. Find somebody that's like suicidal, and they're like, I have nothing to live for. I'm like, well, come here. I'm going to show you how to fly this thing. <laughs> just we don't take endorse that. Full speed. And if you D-Y-E, you know, then you wanted get, to. But if you live... I guarantee you, that... Yeah. yeah. That guy's not married. Uh, I, I, I do guarantee you, though, that... I, I mean, hopefully in my lifetime, these things will be real commercial products that you could go buy, you know, at the, at the local Honda outlet, Harbor Freight. you know, and pick up your, pick up your drone that you fly in the work. I mean, it's it's coming. The technology is there. It's so much safer than traditional aviation. Um, you can have ballistic parachutes, all this backup stuff. But what's controlling it? His it's a flight controller. I mean, it, there's a flight controller, but we yeah, don't know what, what it is. Flight controller. I mean, is it like? I don't is know, he man. using like a? Is he using like a, a seriously dodo? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a NASA V1 from DJI. It doesn't look like a good flight controller because he'd be a lot more stable. Here's yeah, it's the problem. freaking gas engines, though, man. The response time, yeah. the throttle response, and well, just work effect. It's just look not... at him. It looks like he's in a Amish coffin. buggy on air on wheel. <laughs> the problem on the is side, you're just about in a coffin already. Got him. Whoa! I know. He. The problem is, I think, is that those motors, engines, when they're hovering, they're generating excess heat, and they're much higher prone to uh, to lean out stall, lean out shutoffs. Which happens all the time in hover mode, so like or in hovering. Uh, hover yeah, mode. I would have I would have gone electric, but there's twenty thousand electric ones out there. So Stig uh, Stig uh, says he heard he used uh, two Nazas. Okay. okay. Don't know yeah. which version, yeah. but I would make that little thing I'm sitting in. I'd make the sides a lot higher. Looks like yeah, it's like an Undertaker uh, thing in there. That is crazy. If He's he getting the views. Are 352,000 views? 120, 123 people said this is too dangerous. <laughs> Look at that. Where is this guy? Like, 
I'm going to say maybe Germany. Yeah. Flugentag. You can't get any cooler than that. There's nothing that man will ever do in his life that will be cooler than this. Look at that machine. Man, oh, man. Now that needs to go on Flying Giants as an article. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if those are DA200s on there or whatever, I hope you didn't use, like, El Cheapo engines. Yeah. i got to watch this thing at some point. That is so cool. Anyway. Crazy, crazy. Indeed. Yeah. Well, well, now we've seen everything and nothing is cool anymore. If I flew that, I'd have a big whoop in my pants. <laughs> oh, my God. Jason. <laughs> that is not PG rated. <laughs> well, you know, in our team meeting, we said let's freak everybody out. I'm just kidding. No one said that. <laughs> okay, hold on. I got one more for everyone out there. You're going to like it. This is for you Joe Nollers who just don't know what kind of vehicle to ride. <sighs> uh, present yourself again. I got him. Oh, my God. Look at that. It's got a motor in there. Is that? Ooh, funk. Look at that guy. Dunk. I can, I'm just seeing me going down the hill to the 3D line from the main line on that. <laughs> That's how you yeah. eat it hardcore on that thing. You would so, be breaking wrists. Those are those are shifter cart wheels. I uh, had a, what's called a balance board. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's basically uh, a drum that's like 12 inches long and 6 inches in diameter. It's like a, a long tube. And then you put a small skateboard on top of it without wheels, and you balance on it. And I used to be pretty good at it, but... Yeah, that well, would require skill. I was thinking, I was throwing this around. I hadn't pulled the trigger on it, but Banggood sells a, a kind of a knockoff version of the Segway, but it's the the smaller version where there's no handlebars that it comes up. It's just kind of like this thing that goes up to your knee, but it's two wheel. It's got big tires and stuff still, so you can go around. But I was like, man, it might be a great retrieval uh, machine for racing and stuff. When you land out, you know, you got to go pick up your quad, and you still have both your hands free. Um, you carry your transmitter you want and quad or whatever and search for it. But I was thinking about hitting them up and asking, you know, seeing about a review on that for a retrieval uh, machine to have with you when you're racing. That's a big old retrieval machine. But it beats walking unless you need the exercise. And also you can use it for Pokemon Go. <laughs> if you go slow enough. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you got there, Jim? I thought we would talk a little bit about the Jetty Duplex. Matt, where's yours? Matt, I don't have one. Where's your jetty, man? I don't own a jetty. I'm just like regular old Futaba guy. Let's. Wow, I thought wow, we would wow. go over why the jetty is pretty awesome. First of all, uh, aesthetically, for people watching, this thing is all aluminum, and you can. It feels like a quality piece of kit, as someone from England might say. And they would also say aluminium. Aluminium, yes. Yeah. And uh, so, look at that thing, man. That's They're not messing around here. And so, that goes into the build. Like, every switch that you see here can be moved and or changed into a different kind of switch. And so you it's can, a piece of cake, too. So, you've done it, Jason? I have done it, yeah. I put a, I put a uh, momentary, a spring-loaded switch right here. For my DLG, so I can hold for launch mode, and then as soon as I launch, I release. Um, and I had to swap that out, and then move a couple around. I moved this button over here. Um, to have a push button one for my oh, timers nice. and different things. Um, but yeah, it's just a ribbon cable, and it just literally just plugs in and unplugs and screws in with so quality hardware. So I don't hardware. have to take the case apart. I just unscrew the switch and move it over. Yeah, if you want to move any of those, you just pull the back off, and it takes two oh, seconds. Got to pull the back off. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the uh, fact that you can use the whole radio as an accelerometer. Yeah. So, so like you can if fly I, like that. It, oh, you can fly like this, which I'm sure would be terrible, but if I was, uh, let's say, FPVing in a larger size uh, gimbal, or uh, uh, my camera was on a uh, pan and tilt, I, get, I could pan and tilt with my transmitter. Watch out. That's like pretty that. cool. That'd be pretty had, cool. So quads, like the tiny whoop, um, we'd have to get a module. We can we can bind the 
jetty to a spectrum radio thing with a module oh, thing. So that's won't next get into on that. the list, by the way. Nice. But you could you know how people have body English when they're flying FPV and they're all doing stuff? Like you could just do that with your radio and feel normal. <laughs> right? Those guys that are doing that wouldn't have to use sticks anymore, they just use their body. Interesting. It so you can work. run anything off of that. Yeah, it's it's literally proportional channels you can assign to any function, anything. It's it'll do whatever you want. So you can totally assign it to aileron elevator, rudder, throttle even for tilt up or however you want to do it. But yeah. Pretty damn I like cool. The, I think you said you could also assign it to um, to do specific tasks. Like if you pick it up it'll call out the alti altitude. Yeah, well, on my uh, my backup snipe, I have the altimeter in it, and then when I when I want to know the altitude, I just raise it, just a little, little tilt, and it'll call it out to me. Do that with your battery level too, because that's yeah. pretty. Any, I mean, anything, to look any, any telemetry data readout, any function, the the jet guys uh, will use that and have it assigned to their brakes on their wheels. So when they come in and land, they can pull brakes wow, just by moving nice. without having to hit a switch or do anything, and it's proportional. Pretty cool. You know what else you can do is maybe put an odd one, like a forward flip, and you could put a. You can also put your own voice or someone else or any voice in here, like in, like a computer voice, and so you could make, do a up flip. So when somebody gets too close to you, your radio could say, "Please step away from the pilot." Please yeah. step away. And it comes with uh, Nicole Kidman programmed already, so she is pretty intense. We were talking about doing a whole uh, Miss Ashley vocal uh, range of things that you could download onto your radio, so Miss Ashley could tell you to put up your flaps, and you're in 3D mode. Nice. Rogerio, yes, we can see your Q&A question there. We sure can. And then uh, Stig says, uh, it looks almost like the, the Free Sky Horus. Which I would I say the horse is looks like the is uh, maybe like a weird cartoon version of it, but uh, it's terrible. Ah, okay, it's not as nearly as quality as the Jetty Radio. They, I mean, it's German built. It is um, just uses the best of the best stuff. Hall effect sensors for the gimbals. Once you touch these sticks, like and, and then you touch a horse gimbal or something else, it's just nowhere near the same quality. I Did got we... to play with the with the Horus at uh, at um, Toledo, and I just wasn't impressed as Ooh, I no. thought I was going to be. I was so excited about the Horus, and then I got my hands on it, and it was like holding a lunchbox. You know, the, just, the sliders are pretty nice. I, I'll give it to them on the the software for the Horus. I mean the, mm -hmm. I mean it's not intuitive. It's really like you got to be a programmer almost to figure stuff out. But it'll do anything you want. But it's just not as simple and easy as the Jetty, where you can also do anything and everything you want with better hardware. So that's why I like it. There we're also gonna get, we're gonna get some hate mail for this one, guys. Aesthetically, ah, so. um, this is the Army version, but uh, there are people making skins, so you could design any skin you want. I have the goal of having Terry on mine. And nice, uh, if nice, you, nice. if you want to learn more about this. I have one more thing to talk about that is not made by Jetty, but um, we have an article called Five Favorite Features of the Jetty DS-14 Radio, and you can Google that and read and get links and all that stuff. So I was at Seth, I think it was, and I was approached by a man named Gunny Jeeves, and he is active on HeliFreak, a site that we own and operate, and he said... Uh, what if you could use your spectrum receivers with that as with that jetty? And I said, well, that would save my life because everything I own is on spectrum, <laughs> and so it's in the mail. It is a I don't where the heck would it go? Well, some people either cut into that existing back plate or you know, buy a new spare plate and then create a a custom cutout hole or just Velcro it to the back. Yeah, I might go the Velcro route. Now you could, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen his system, so I'm not sure, but you can also do it wirelessly. You don't have to have anything on your radio if you don't want to. Well, when I get it, I will be doing a review, and it would be awesome to run this all, like everything I own. Is yeah. Spectrum. And, and his might be the same way. Is it, is it like a, a module? 
Yeah, it's like a actual, and I said, so I need to buy a module. So you actually do need to buy a Spectrum or JR or whatever module you use. DSMX, yeah. Right, and so uh, he sent me one, which well, is awesome. What you do is uh, you, you, you can download different versions of firmware for the Jetty receivers, and basically you take the uh, Spectrum module and you can you can even make a little box for it. I think I think even maybe even a Spree model sells a box for it. But you have a little box, you've got the module, you've got a battery to power it, and then you've got a little R3 tiny uh, spectrum or uh, jetty receiver. And you set that to, I think it's PPM out or something. That plugs into the module. Your jetty radio talks to the receiver, which talks to the module, which talks to the receiver on the. the oh, you're losing receiver. me, bud. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just like it's just like a bypass, so it's a wireless bypass, and which which means you wouldn't have to have anything plugged into the back or attached to the oh, radio directly. So you guys remember the trapper keepers from the '90s? Is that what yeah. your skin on the front of that is, Jim? Is it like that holographic uh, yeah. thing going on there? Mm, no, it's just, it just appears to be uh, it's aluminum with. Uh, this is oh. not a decal of it. It seems to be really on there. Because when you move it, it looks like it's moving underneath it, and maybe mm. it's just the way your camera is. Yeah. So. That would be even cooler, though. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Now yeah. this is not uh, color. It's let me get it just right. Yeah, there. it's just like a. It's just LED backlit. Can you pull up RC groups on that? Uh, I can play games on it. Can, can you play Pokemon snake? on there? Yeah, I play, play Pokemon snake. with it all the time. Nice. <laughs> So I figured out, uh, last last Pokemon statement, what we need to do is make some sort of uh, containers for your phone that are like really cool so you don't look like you're holding your phone when you're walking around. Like I, We should make a giant Geiger counter, uh, a <laughs> fake Geiger like counter it. with your phone in it so you're walking around like you're taking, uh, you know readings on, on on that on the Geiger counter or you make one of those those uh, what is the ones in Ghostbusters the little thing that opens up that uh -huh. says if we have the readings that's what you should make and stuff like that that you put your phone in wouldn't that be cool we need hey Rogerio so we can't respond directly via the uh, Q&A thing basically we can hit the select button here it'll pull it up top I don't know if you see that but it says currently answering uh, and then we can just audibly respond to it. Uh, we don't have chat enabled. If there was chat enabled, then we could do something like that. But that's something we can look at doing uh, for another podcast. Chat and a live broadcast is that it, you either have to do one or the other. And once you start looking at chat, you totally blow the flow of the live broadcast, I think. I agree with that. There you go. Also, uh, the question will be, where do I get this thing that Gunny Jeeves makes? That's what I wrote him today and said, do you have a link? <laughs> And he said, I don't have a link, but uh, look me up on HeliFreak. And I guess he's selling these units. If he wants me to review one, I told him, I said, look, if I do a story on this, you better get ready because we have blown people out of the water with uh, requests on this. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that is that. Well, fellas, I got two RC topics for you. All right. Go I'm ahead. Oh, We're all ears. ears. So I'm heading out first thing in the morning up to – beautifully flat Muncie, Indiana to the AMA headquarters. It's about a five-hour drive for me. Not too shabby, but I'll be attending the uh, AMA Nats, competing in the 441, I believe it is. It's the hand launch glider competition, DLGs, F3K, however you say it. It's awesomely fun. We're going to have about 40 pilots in the competition. A lot of big names. Pete Goldsmith's going to be there. Oleg, Jeff Carr, a bunch of great guys that are flying. Little Pete? Little Pete. Don Anderson's going to be there. Don uh, Anderson? Will you tell Don Anderson that uh, Billy Hale said hello? Yeah, man. Certainly will. So I'm excited about that. Um, now the temps are looking pretty dang hot. It's supposed to be like mid to upper 90s, light winds, like heat index is way over 100. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's going to be really hot. I'm going to be out there all day. I'm camping out, so I'm going to have no uh, break from the weather. So... I was like, you know what, I've seen these things before. I always saw like the little bucket portable air conditioner, so I was like, you know, I'm going to buy one, but I'm going to make it a little bit better. So I went on Amazon and bought a cooler and bought a fan and bought some PVC pipe from Home Depot, and I made hey the ultimate portable air conditioning unit. Looks like a droid. Maybe just wear it on your back. 
I could backpack this. <laughs> that would be so Yeah, and, and, and don't put that on the ground. One don't going put that on the ground with a fan off of it, because somebody will mistake it for a porta potty. <laughs> True that. So, yeah, so this thing is awesome, dude. Oh, we you got put the fan on the top. Yeah. So it's a toilet seat on the top with a fan <laughs> totally on it. Totally, it's a toilet seat, dude. <laughs> is that a toilet seat? No, it's an actually, it's, it's the a lid. The lid. Oh. <laughs> I uh, basically took a, a scroll saw and, uh, you know, cut the whole size for the fan, took a, a hole saw, um, a hole cutter for a drill, cut out the holes for the PVC pipe, um, and then I just kind of took, this is a 12-volt fan designed for your cars with a cigarette lighter. I just kind of cut off, shortened up all the wiring and made it, you know, put a Deans on it for my battery. So I've got a little 4,000 milliamp hour pack on there. It draws about 0.6 amps on low and 0.8 on high, so it'll last you know four hours before I have to change out the battery, and I got plenty of batteries. Does um, it blow cold air? It blows really really cold air, and you can you know load this up with ice. I'll be going making an ice run every day, I guess, or I don't know how long if the ice lasts a couple days, and I'll be fine. But yeah, uh, that, it blows, that ice uh, ain't gonna last a couple days, man. Well, when you start blowing hot air down on it, you're gonna yeah, get a couple hours course. tops. But, but, so, a guy did this, and he stuck a, a gallon of water that was frozen, and that was all he had in it, oh, and nice. it was it was spitting out 42-degree air with a temp meter. Have you run it? Yeah, I've ran it. Uh, I ran it uh, for a couple hours yesterday just to make sure everything was, like, kosher with it, but I didn't put any uh, stuff in it yet, but Jason, I'm going to be need filling to, it with ice. You need to sticker that up with some RC groups. I tried. I've got the vinyl dick, but it doesn't stick, man. I, I like. I went to peel it off, and it just nothing came right off. Oh so. uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a stencil. Maybe stencil. Carry... Spray paint it. Yeah, I'll have to sand or do something. But... Hey, uh, show anyway. Matt that bidet that you made. The uh, lipo power <laughs> bidet. <laughs> you made a bidet? No, I don't know what he's talking about. Everyone's <laughs> using bidets now. No one uses toilet paper. Well, anymore. I did buy a $10 Coleman shower thing, so I could probably use that as a bidet <laughs> if I needed to. <laughs> Y'all don't even want to know what Jason did before the camera went on. <laughs> no, oh, my God. So anyway, I'm excited about the Nats. This is my first Nats competition. I don't know why it took me so long to ever go, but I'm super pumped about it. It's going to be fun. And then uh, when we get back, man, too bad I'm only going to have a couple days here next week uh, before we head to Oshkosh, but um, I've gotten the mail, the new uh, Emmon ProSight HD uh, FPV system designed for racers and stuff. So I'm going to get to test that out, do a review on it, uh, check it out. Um, I'm pretty pumped about it. I mean, the antennas, I'm not so thrilled about with how that looks, you know, a little T sticking up. I hope it doesn't break. I hope it's more durable than I imagine it is. Um, but the cool thing is, is the new Eashine goggles, the goggles one that we talked about last week that I showed you. Um, besides some of the the uh, outer shell problems that it has with looks, um, the screen is really, really nice. It's a 1080p screen, uh, where the head plays are a 720p screen. Now the contact, the the uh, Pro Sites only spitting out 720 video. Um, it's with a 720p cam, but the 1080p screen looks really amazing, so I'll be able to compare it with both the head plays and the goggles one for Miyashin. And uh, but I'm really excited about having an HD FPV system because I've heard good things, I've seen some good good videos on it, and I'm excited to get my hands on it and post up a review on RC Groups. Speaking of that and the Jetty Radio, um, you're going to bring that headset up to Oshkosh for Jim Burke to utilize on his Tiny Whoop. Uh huh. And I was wondering, um, Matt was saying that there's a fly, an RC flying section. Do we want to bring any uh, paragliders up there to blow everyone's mind? Oh, we could, yeah. Just a yeah, thought I, I had. It's it's from seven till dark or six till dark every night out on the main runway. The AMA is hosting a uh, uh, RC fly-in. I know, man. You yeah. with the lights would be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's well, till dark, but sunset would be cool. Be cool looking. So, sure. have you guys, you've been to Oshkosh before, haven't you? Hey, it's Nikolai! I've been a long time ago. Yes. What's up, man? Be, hey, sure your, be sure your mic works, Nikolai, because your accent is so thick, I can rarely understand what the heck you're hey, saying. Oh. I'm very sorry about all of that, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was freaky deaky. <laughs> so, is that, your, uh, is that your bedroom you're in right now? <laughs> no, it's my, it's my office. Is it a bunker? Is it below ground? Yeah, I'm about 30 feet down right now. Good. 
Good, good. Ah, well, you got good reception for being underground. So what's up, man? Yeah, what are you reviewing these days, Nikolai? Uh, right now I'm working on the Sig Rascal 80. Oh, <laughs> Sig. Yeah. Uh, a mainstay of the RC industry for decades. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, actually, I've actually been wanting one for a while, so it's awesome, awesome, uh, awesome opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You're getting tongue-tied there, brother. Get a little bit. It's that accent. <laughs> it's the Dramita. <laughs> Dramita. <laughs> Dramita from Kanata. Right. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's gonna that's gonna last a long time, isn't it? Oh yeah. No, well, you're never living that one down. Until the next thing. We're right. gonna change your screen name to Dromeda. Oh god. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, cool things that we're gonna review, so I didn't hunt this down. This company found me, and they said, "Would you like to uh, review what? this for us?" That it's, that is a sandwiched foam one. It's Byfly. Check Easy. it out. It's got a the it's got the little uh, uh, LCD screen or the LEDs in the front here. Okay, Look that, at this contraption. Now that looks like not a real unit. That looks like a conceptual drawing, but maybe yeah. it is. No, it looks rendered. And then the uh, camera in the front is nice and tucked away and not going to die. Um, I still don't like more. the antenna out there. Yeah, I think it's too close to the battery. It I needs mean, to be, meaning it needs to be higher up and away. I, I'd like to see these things more integrated. I know that that uh, then jacks around the way your signal works, but I don't know. We'll see. They they said that they were going to send me one, and I think it's about a two ten size. Is that that sandwiched foam, like the three little foam layers that? Let's go look at the specs. It looks like it's foam. No, I don't think it's foam. It's got to be foam with carbon on top. Oh, it could be. I'm at. I don't know. It doesn't say, does it? Battery fifteen hundred three s. Is it rendering makes it look shiny on the top? So you're probably right. It's foam sandwich carbon fiber. Yeah, there's no. I think that's. Bad. I think that's what it is. What is that foam? Something that my son has is made out of that same foam. Like it's like crab, uh, crab it's foam, wrestling mat foam. Yes. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Unified body design, revolutionary design makes blah blah blah. Installed in the. It's main a revolution. Very design. Look at these LEDs right here in the front. Mm-hmm. That's pretty slick. See, maybe it's not foam. It, that that's just that color. Is that is that same stuff? Yeah. Two twenty. It's carbon yeah. fiber airframe, manufactured from carbon fiber with its in two, uh, innovative unified body. is structurally the toughest FPV drone that can handle the the, inevi- the inevitable <laughs> high-speed gate collisions. Yeah. Uh, I, I uh, bet it is foam and carbon fiber. And look, it's got a, got a place right here where I can plug in my uh, vape. <laughs> <laughs> Good, now, did you? Uh, are you gonna be the guinea pig? Yeah. Wait, wait. What does that say? What does that look right there? What does that L A L E D say? Six six. Nah. What does that say? F A six. F A six. This is like <laughs> one of those vision tests does on Facebook. Does that say a bad word? Going, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. You're absolutely it really correct. Is, oh, come it really on. Says, <laughs> That is not some acceptable. Things, some things do not translate well. I yeah. bet that this little thing right here that my mouse is over, if you see my mouse uh, adjust that camera angle. Yeah. And then here's the back. At the very least, you're not going to snap this thing off, hopefully. No, oh, that's the first thing that's going. Yeah. Mm. LED lights. I wonder if you could put a, a, a L bracket on here and so it's sticking out back instead of up top. Those lights look pretty small, though. I wonder how bright they're being. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It looks kind of interesting. There's the LED lights again. I mean, the... Oh, gosh. What is that other... There's another uh, RC airplane um, that did not translate well. It's this FPV rig. Uh, oh, the eyesore. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> it's called I... S O A R I or play on iPad and iPhone and all that. It's called the eyesore. I can't make this stuff up. I mean, and it, it it sort of was kind of the butt of a joke here for a long time. 
Uh, let's there's, see if I there's can... There's a DLG brand called Arm Sore. Yeah, yeah. You get a sore arm from throwing them. Uh, where's where's uh, Mean Joe? Uh, mean Joe, are you are you on? I think Mean Joe is uh, at... Oh. Um, what's that flying that's going on right In now? In fact, we should contact him. Where is it? Uh, let me let me get Mean Joe here. Here we are. Yeah, send it, send him a direct link. Okay, ready? Maybe mean can... Joe, comma what's your twenty? There and we then go. just uh, grab the link Looking out of the top of the frame, send it to him, and sending. It, there we go. Woo! That would be yeah, awesome to get live footage. Did you see right. that the carbon hornet two B that sticks in us? No, that is crazy looking. Let All right, me, do it, me Jason. Do a share screen, I guess. It is expensive, though. Uh, uh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the screen? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that Nikolai with a beard in that video? Does that look like you, Nikolai? Look at this, Jacob. Uh, it's like it's all carbon. Oh, I've seen this thing. Definitely That's an interesting cool. design. Wow. Molded uh, carbon fiber. Well, we know light doesn't There we break. go. Now I can make them bigger. Well, oh, kind of bigger. Joe V is on, y'all. Yeah, what? Man. That's right. Uh oh. What's going on, man? Are you in the field, brother? Yeah, we're at Watts. You're at Watts? Watts? That. <laughs> You're at Watts? Uh, Watts, you say? <laughs> okay. There he All is. All right, everybody. We're now broadcasting live from Watts with Mean Joe Vermillion wearing his awesome SIG hat. I got Steve Mills here. Uh huh. There's the Steve Arena. Hey, Steve, man, you gotta check out my new SG. All right. Look at these guys. How's it going, Joe? What's going on? And we're all just talking about you and how mean you are. So I we're glad that you're here. Mess with me. How's yeah. the weather out there? Is it is it hot? Where is Watts? Does anybody know? Oh. Watts, it's uh, Adamawa, Adamawa. Ottawa, is it Canada? It's by Dramita, uh, Illinois. <laughs> jo Joey Bear, hold, her, hold your phone higher. Yeah, hold yeah. your phone higher. Let, Let Steve hold it. Oh, we got, <laughs> we got bad signal from Mean Joe Vermillion. Oh, no, like, oh, did we lose him? I think we lost him. I hear his voice I'm every here. now and then. Yeah, we we hear you. Back. It was Steve. When he walks away, I bet it'll clear up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's really dark at that event. Do y'all see this video? No. Must be night flying. Any better? No, no video. I think your your bandwidth is a little there, bit there funky we go. there. There we go. All right, so what's that airplane behind you? It looks like a Citabria. Yes. Taylor Craft. That's a Citabria. Oh, I look, thought it was that Taylor. Boom! Oh, yeah, Jim Graham, Jim five points. Man, Jim I'm Jim fired. Jim. <laughs> All right, so walk us around, dude. You've got the mic. I've got the mic. You got that? Go for it. That looked like a Taylor Craft over there. I swear that was a Taylor Craft. You know what? You're right, it is. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, John, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Han, sorry. Look. Now hey, I am the Taylor I am the winner. Right? Yeah, it's a Taylor craft. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, oh, come on, man. Thank you, you and your facts. Hey, I'm sorry, Jim. Standing here with John Cease, man. He's that's the guy flying the Taylor craft. So you were correct. What's John, up, you're John? you're live on the RC Group's live hangout. Cool. We have <laughs> over nine thousand live viewers right now. Hey, everybody. Nine thousand. Yeah. That's awesome. 9,487. That's right. <laughs> we just lost one. We just lost one. We just lost one. So how how long have you been flying? How was your flight? It was good. Good. It's just hot. It's, it's hot. hot. It's real hot. It's like a furnace blowing. It's crazy. If if you hear people talking but it sounds like a foreign language, sit down and get some water. Yeah, <laughs> that's no kidding, right? That's what's so happened to my Jim. portable air conditioner. Oh, did you see Jason's portable AC? Want to check it out? It looks like yeah, a potty. Let's check it out. All right. We're checking out this Citabria. No, we're not checking out the potty. <laughs> Taylor Craft. Hey. Oh, that was the classic, dude. That was classic. Now, right, Joe, so we'll, yeah, Joe, did they have around. a bidet at this event? <laughs> they do. I was oh, just on it, actually. 
<laughs> it's a public bidet. Yeah. Like Roman bathhouse. All the water. Woo! Woo! Uh, there's old RA course. <laughs> All right. Say woo hoo! Woo hoo! Tiny woo! Hot trigger! <laughs> Pretty sure he said hot trigger. Hot he trigger. Said hot, I think he hot triggered us. How you doing? What's happening, RA? How's that beard treating you today? Oh, it's doing good. It's doing good. I got a lot of a lot of interest in the uh, in the blue foes and stuff. I want to thank you for the review. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Looks pretty sweet. I want one. What's that? <laughs> hey, we got a fire. Check this out. Yeah, a fire. They Live on the fire. RC Group's Hangout, we have a uh, fire. Breaking news. At Watsover Automamuama, uh, Dromita. Uh-huh. Where's the fire? I don't know, but it's in his goatee. This is your good side. We're going. <laughs> Point the camera out. Turn, Turn the camera out. <laughs> <laughs> so as this guy's putting out his lipo fire, let's interview him. <laughs> How's that fire going? Right How's that for you? <laughs> Treating you. Live on RC groups. There it is. That's what it looks like. Check that out. What kind of lipo is that? Was it, it was an 1800 million. Oh, is that that? Um, I had that same plane back there. You know there, what? Man. If you use your it's astro nan nanotech, use your astro charger and put it on point oh five, you can bring that battery back. <laughs> <laughs> I Amazing. had that same plane. I'm glad nothing happened. That's cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> How do you think they flavor that lithium polymer smoke like bubble gum? Uh, it's <laughs> grapes, man. It's grapes. It's like vaping. <laughs> Jerry Fang. Here's the here's the flight line. Fine. So is this day is this day one? When does the uh, it kicks off really hardcore this weekend, right? Yeah. Yep. Hey, by Typical. the way, thanks, Jim. Say what? That's it. Proud owner. Ah. Proud blue fo. Nice blue fo. Hey, by the way, Jim, I think RA just I RA yeah, called it a blue fo. Those nanotech lipos that we just saw go up, he's got these on sale really cheap if anybody's <laughs> interested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a question for you. Is that a blue UFO or a blue foe? That is a blue foe. Yeah. A green, a green blue foe. Some you had guy, it right the first time. Yeah, some guy on YouTube got all over <laughs> me for calling it the wrong thing. Oh, uh, well, that guy was probably Internet. somebody somebody we know that <laughs> was disguised. Hey, no. we got a really cool EDF jet coming up here. This thing is pretty smooth. I saw it fly earlier. It's not using nanotech, is it? Oh, look at Ooh. that bad boy. That you know, that same that same plane was at um, uh, Alec at uh, Ready Made RC. He had this same exact bird there, and I put my mouth up to the tailpipe, and they went wide open. You want to talk about... <laughs> hey, that's a Subart plane, isn't it? Is that a you know, yeah. This is, yeah. This is a... He makes good-looking stuff, man. Yeah, it's sexy. It's a banana hobby HDS. Wow. Even yeah. more crazy. Wow. What? Yeah, the thing sounds sweet. It sounds like a real jet. And it floats very, very nicely. It's kind of lightweight, isn't it? Good yeah. on banana hobby. Yeah, that's a big yeah, foamy. Yeah, really nice. He's telling, me, he's telling me he thinks it's a copy of the Subart plane. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. That's kind of sad, but hey. Yeah, uh, here, you, you know what you guys need to see? Let's go in here. This little hanger they got here is pretty sweet. Hey, while right. we're going there, Joe, I want to say there's someone that keeps giving us a thumbs down on all our YouTube videos, and if they're at that show, I would like you to find them. I'll find <laughs> it. I'm trying I'm to down. find that one guy. <clears throat> Whoa, look at all this great. Ooh, a GB, my favorite airplane of all time. No, that's a plane and a half. V-24 Liberator? <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Who do these planes belong to? Everybody? I think they're I think they're club planes, yeah. Wow. Look at this look at this Sky Raider. Your club beats my club. <laughs> nice. It's even got its own winch. Yeah, yeah, they all do. They're all got that's a genius idea. Look at that. Wow, it looks expensive. <laughs> 
Yeah, I have a yeah, private winch for my aircraft. This fleet. is the, the perfect place for Jason's uh, electric uh, air conditioner and bidet. Dude, and <laughs> could you like we would have so much fun tiny whooping it through all these planes. Ooh, yeah. Jason, you should put your tiny whoop on that winch. Keep it out of the way. <laughs> I would, yeah. That's where I need to store it. Look at <laughs> that thing. Whoop Holy in the fuselage. Is that a Bill yeah. Hempel? Yeah, for reference, look at that thing. You could literally put a kid in there, I think. Oh, yeah. Easy. Yeah, right? I could almost put my head in there, but not quite. <laughs> well, maybe if you keep working. How about that GB? Let's look at that GB. Man, oh, man. I love a GB. Nice. Getting, I'm getting head trauma just looking at it. Look at that. I, Beauty. I bet it doesn't tip stall at all. <laughs> no, it flies like it's on rails. Really? It takes when off they, like a homesick egg. When they get big, bigger like that, man, they get floaty because I guess the, the, the wing to weight ratio or the lift to weight ratio gets so much better. And the knife edge, too. I want one. Now we got helicopters going. Uh, Come back out here. Oh, Jim. Oh. Helicopters? <laughs> really? Much? They're going to ruin them? <laughs> Let me tell you, from a uh, videography standpoint, those are the most difficult things to keep in frame. There's nothing harder to videotape than a helicopter. You never know where it's going to go. Yeah, never. You practice. I don't even think the guy flying it knows where it's going to go. He's just banging sticks. At... um. XFC last year, one of them came apart. The blade flew into the crowd and slapped somebody right on the forearm, broadside. Left a big, huge Ouch. welt. Lucky it didn't leave a gaping hole. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's basically a flying lawnmower. Yeah. Well, Mean Joe, man, we sure appreciate you taking our call and giving us some live footage. This will be uh, something we can talk about, make people come look at this video. Anytime, man. Well, have a great weekend, and uh, we yeah, will too. talk to you next week. All right, brother. Take care. All right. Later. Ooh, hot trigger. Yeah. Hot trigger. Hot trigger. Hot tamale. Hot trigger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hot trigger. <laughs> Well, everybody, oh, we've uh, been talking for an hour. I certainly made it through my list, and there is uh, a rare Pokemon out in the backyard, and I need to get out of here pretty quick. Uh, I'm, Jason, I'm getting ready to head out to go fly Tiny Whoops in the Airsoft Arena. Oh, yeah, Sweet. so there's a new indoor in Nashville, and Jason's going to see what he thinks, and maybe we'll have a Tiny Whoop uh, FPB race there. Yeah. You guys are so lucky, man. Uh, I mean, how many, I got that stuff up here. But. How many Whoops can you put in the air at one time, Jason? At least six. I uh, like thirty. Wow. However many have, channels. Now they it's, aren't. It's, it's just a, DSMX. You know, however many, however many spectrum okay. radios you got. Yeah. Well, totally that's however many FPV channels. So well, it, yeah. Well, he didn't say to fly FPV, did he? <laughs> oh, I think. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well. Uh, but, yeah, what do you think about a tiny whoop only fly in? That would be pretty interesting. Well, that's yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, there'd be people getting hit right. in the head left and right. <laughs> uh, skirt. <laughs> My camera's on the doorstep, uh, so when I get home, I'm gonna be FPBing. Yes, sir. Awesome. Something Enjoy. to look forward to. Did you get multiple batteries? Oh yeah, the batteries and motors are already here. I'm just waiting on the camera from being yeah. good. Nice. I got I got four batteries, Matt, and a four battery charger. I, I do plan on flying the tiny whoop around the pilots' tents at the Nats and and try to mess with some people. <laughs> oh, I don't love that. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a Tiny Whoop ban at all events. <laughs> hey, uh, this okay. week we promised not to talk about the Tiny Whoop. No, we're going to talk about it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, it's Thursday. Thanks for hanging out with us at the live uh, Google Hangout, <laughs> RC Group's Hangout. <laughs> well, I was going to call it a Google Hangout, but that's actually a correct term. There you uh, go. Friday, Friday's on the way. What's up, Jake? What were you about to say, Jason? I, I didn't say anything. That wasn't I me. Was, I think it was Nikolai. I yeah. said close enough. Close enough. Oh, so uh, Friday's here. It's still summertime. The The grip of winter is not even near at this point. So everybody go out there and enjoy the heat. It's better than ice and rain. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us live. Thanks for watching the video after the fact. And thanks for hanging out on RC Groups in general. Guys, you have anything to say before we get out of here? Hot uh, crickets. It's hot totally. Trigger. Whoa! Did I, we just get a hot trigger from Nikolai? Oh yeah. You're stepping out of your comfort zone, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, yeah. I want to say uh, one thing I meant to mention earlier and I forgot is we have our first ever uh, advertiser in the RC Group's mass email going out. Uh, maybe not this Friday, but next is a spree. So when you get your mass email, be sure to click on that banner and show your support for a spree. And, buy uh, Jenny Radio, yeah. And just yeah. buy radio, you know, whatever. Buy, just buy something. All right, everyone. Uh, we'll see you on the Internet. And I'm Jim T. Graham, your host. Thanks to Matt. Jason and Nikolai, and we'll see y'all on rcgroups.com. And Mean Joe. Don't forget Mean Joe. Mean Joe, out doing the deal. Uh, Miss oh. Ashley, who wasn't here today, but she's out uh, covering events in the next week or so. So keep her eye out on RC Groups and flyinggiants.com. And we'll I'll do. Telling and talking and spieling. Bye bye. Hot trigger. Hot trigger. Hot trigger. Hot trigger. Jason Cole, where's your hot trigger? Any whoop trigger. Wow! <laughs>